Good morning, TCG crew. How are y'all doing? Pre-game crew, all y'all. P-Court, Armadillo Voodoo, Armadillo Voodoo. Now you've got all my energy. There you go. I'm pretty excited about today's show. Let me go to my notes. You're welcome, Tony. Hey, Brett. Dragon Man, Don. <laughs> Thank you, sweet. Jared, Emad. Hey, Chris, I don't see you in here a lot. Chris is a TCG crypto guy. Welcome, I think you trade more than just crypto too. Hey, Roger, P Court, Barry, another Brett. Steven, Tammy, Amazon. Man, Amazon was frustrating yesterday. Hey, Judd, thank you for all that you do. And Galaxy Star, Tammy on Amazon, they had union news middle of day. And I couldn't, I heard the rumor, but I couldn't confirm. So I couldn't post it in the room, but I think it affected it. But beyond the news, we knew technically it needed a rest along with shop. And then the Dow, Biden news, and everybody jumped into infrastructure and threw away the baby with the bathwater, i.e. technology. So midday, we had two different news things that impacted Amazon. It was the union news and then the uh, infrastructure plan getting more traction or being passed. I don't know the exact details, but then the Dow, which I was looking to short, went crazy. So I, would, I had a successful short on earlier in the day and then couldn't pursue it any further. Good morning. All right. Hey, Chris Bond, Benjamin, Bo, Peculiar, Rob, Widow Puppy, Veronica. Hey, Veronica, haven't seen you in a while. Or maybe I've missed you in the chat. You were in there. Hey, Real. All right. It's 8.30 Eastern. Let's get started. Looking at ES 15 minute. Here is my chart set up. The yellow and purple, 50 and 200 moving average, the green and red, 8 and 21, yellow candles inside bars, then I use the CM Ultimate RSI multi time frame. Red is overbought, green is oversold. TTM squeeze, think or swim default. I get this question the most about the squeeze that I use. TTM squeeze, think or swim default. And then the data source that you use. So if we're looking at, let's say, Apple, and I have the source of NASDAQ, if you're looking at ARCA or other sources of data on TradingView, your squeeze results will look different. So just know that. All right, let's take off the chart setup. And let's get going. Looks like we're getting a little boost here. We just had some news on, I just posted in the news chat room, on US personal income. Let's see, did we beat personal spending unchanged in May and down negative 2%. Personal income down negative, let me just show you. US personal income negative 2% in May. A consensus was it'd be down 2.7, so a slight beat. U.S. personal spending was unchanged in May, and the consensus was it'd be up a little. Okay, got the wrong thing. Let's move this over. All right. So we're getting a little boost from that. That's not a big news item, consumer spending. It's personal income spending. That's not a big one, but it looks like the market's looking for any reason to go up higher. We just hit an all-time high on ES426425, and that is for real. No dividend adjustment there needed. We are on ES futures. So we are testing that 426425 right now. Let's get a FIB retracement to see what our next target was is 4294. Do I think we're going to hit that today? That would be a very, very tall order. But blue sky breakout, RSI doesn't matter on shorter time frames. It could absolutely happen. Wow, they really liked. Remember, bad news is good news. I think they're really enjoying that consumer spending unchanged in May when they thought it'd be up almost a half percent and it was unchanged because then again, we're staving off inflation. So our key support is 425725, 425675. Our prior all-time high that held for a while, 425825, I'd keep that on my chart. Here we go. Four, wait. 
right here at 4258. So that was from June 14th. That was the all-time high we're getting over. On any pullback, I'd watch for that level to possibly hold. And we're getting some volume as well on this spike. So overnight, who is the strongest? That is the Dow. The Dow really loved that infrastructure news. We're testing yesterday's high, 34240, and I will forever have this alarm on my YM chart, 35,000. If we approach that area again, I'll look for a short-term short because that is the line in the sand for the bulls. But the next key resistance on the daily is up at 34825. So YM looking good. And then your support, 314133. Then your next strongest, RTY, we have the rebalancing situation. Uh, reconstitution is actually what it's called on RTY. Looks like we're getting some bull action here. We have a new high. So the next key resistance, 2350 and 235030. Four hour bull flags all the way around on everything that we're looking at. So the next strongest is NASDAQ. So NASDAQ's not getting through this resistance yet, 14392 and then 14422 support, 1434450, then 14332. I didn't even do an audio and visual check. I'm assuming we're good. Oh, thank you, Dragon Man. Check my speakers. Let's see. Okay. Oh, you're talking to Brian. Okay, gotcha. All right, sorry about that. We're all good. And by the way, I'm Chart Gal Lori, and I'm part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. We have a swing report service. We have a Trader Pro alert service. Trader Pro is geared for crypto, and it's an integral part of my trading with crypto. And then we have the Chart Guys community, where we have over a thousand members, and we support each other and give each other setups, observations, and we have courses. We have a candlestick course with exit and uh, entries courses and P Court will put that in the room. That's not why I'm here is to tell you about all we do. I'm here to help you prepare for the day. So what I do is go over the Fab Four futures, commodities, crypto, and then the movers and shakers of the morning. So let's see here. All right, so we've gone over ES, NASDAQ, YM, and RTY. So nice little push up. Let me see, are we stalling? Sometimes with these reactions, so this typically is an area where I will short on these spike up if we have a level but we've broken out to all-time high so if we have a level from over here that I can short when we have these huge pushes up into it on news data it's usually good for a quick short flip but that's for experienced futures traders because you can get yourself caught on those gold gold is finally bouncing got a little bit of volume coming in on the hourly so the gold like that news the gold bug 1795.60 is your next resistance then 17,979. Oh, here's a tip. If you're going through this video and you're like, she is going way too fast, pause it. Just pause it. Take a screenshot, get your levels. And of course, you can always rewind and listen to my accent again, if anyone would ever want to do that. Okay, then, oh, nice push, sorry. On gold, nice push. So we are changing some trends here. On the hourly, we got that hourly higher high, lower high, higher low. And now we're moving up and we're trying to change the trend on a higher time frame. Let's see if we've done it. Yes, we've changed the trend on the four hour. So this could be a good bottom fish area for gold. And I like to use micro futures if I'm trading gold futures or GLD calls or puts. Uh, GLD calls or puts are very liquid if you like to trade gold. I like this squeeze on the four hour. I always like to make note when we have a squeeze. What caused that squeeze? It was this constant congestion and then we started building pressure. So interesting setup on gold long today. Oil, we have the rig count at 1030 um, central time, I believe. Please confirm. We are trying to trade, trade, change the trend here. And so now I feel like I just want to stop and talk to y'all about hunting. So 73.63 is the key resistance on oil. And now the key support 72.85 and 72.32. So just break it down here. We got four levels here. 
7425, 7363, and on the support side, 7285, 7232. We got some wonky action in here. If you're trading oil, this is a roller coaster. And if you are in CL long, that's a painful roller coaster. But if we really just zoom out, what the heck is going on? This could be a daily bull flag. We're just, sideways is always good. When you have a run up like this and you go sideways and not down, that is a big check mark for the CL bulls. So this was plenty ample opportunity for the bears to pull it down to at least form a proper bull flag. They can't even pull it down to touch the eight EMA. Do y'all see that? We had one little touch. When we have these air pockets between price and these quick EMAs, look at this air pocket. It was barely even touching. It's just levitating above I like that word levitating above that 8 EMA extreme bull strength I would not be bearish oil in this scenario last week I was for a quick flip but not here hey TR Kobe that VIPS was a great mention you did a great job with that one and I hope you kicked butt oh there's not there's a lot of red on my neck Moez a lot of red um, so here, what I wanted to talk to you about is I'm going to show my redneck a little bit more. We are all hunters. We are all hunters as traders. So a lot of y'all hear me say, hey, go out and uh, go hunt apple today. Go long. Or go, today is actually go short apple. And you go get on your little tree stand. Here's a tree stand. Yes, I've seen them a lot in my life. Here's your tree stand and you have your little blind here and you climb up that tree stand and you get your rifle out and then the sun comes up i.e 9 30 easter and you start shooting at anything that moves anything and everything oh well lori said an apple deer was going to come out i'm going to kill it or you did your own research and said hey i really like apple short today and as soon as the sun as soon as the sun comes out you start shooting at everything that moves we are hunters we are tactical hunters we don't we can't just shoot at anything that moves not only do we have to shoot accurately we're looking for specific spots so if you're a squeamish person you may not want to look at the next uh thing that i pull up where to shoot a deer my dad always told me you shoot it in the boiler room right back here for it to drop dead okay so there's different things that can impact how you shoot a deer. The more accurate places up here, if you're a really good shot, I was not a great shot. My dad would have it shoot. By the way, we would shoot deer to eat, to eat to live because I grew up somewhat on the poor side when I was way younger. So when we you go to trade, right now you are a hunter. And I promise you, what is impacting you as a, as a trader, if you are not a successful trader, is that you're shooting at everything what happens when you go shoot at everything that moves you run out of ammo you can't feed your family i mean you're not going to be a successful hunter if you just go out there and start shooting at everything we have a focus list so today my focus list let me see if i can find it and show you here's my focus list Nike long, space long, wish long, Tesla short, Roku short, XLF short. So after I close down the show and I go look at volume, I may just tweak this list. But here's my focus list. You notice it doesn't say, I'm going to go kill elk, I'm going to go kill deer, I'm going to go kill quail, I'm going to go kill 20 types of animals today. No, you have to have the proper license, the proper ammo, the proper camo, you know, the, your smell, your fragrance. If you're trying to kill deer you got to put some urine on if you're a hunter you know what i'm talking about that sounds gross but you know what i'm talking about so we again some of y'all get in the tree stand and start opening fire and then you run out of ammo we must wait we've got to analyze our distance i.e our distance from stop loss what kind of bullet type do we have i.e our position size your shooting ability are you a good shot dan he's a great shot he can go large position size because he is an amazing marksman when it comes to trading. If you are a newer trader, you shouldn't be sizing up until you are a consistently profitable trader. And we want meat on the bone. That's kind of a stretch of this analogy, but you don't wanna be going long apple up here. What do you have to look forward to? You have this, that's it. 
from the high of yesterday, 134.64 to 137. We want a trade where we have meat on the bone. We can stay in that trade. So overall, this analogy that I'm taking a little too far is you must have patience. At 9.30 Eastern, we all climb up the tree stand we all climb up the tree stand and we have our ammo ready. And let's just say you have eight bullets, okay? Don't go shooting at everything. Wait. Wait for that prey to come in a little closer. What does that mean? We want this. If I'm trying to short apple, I want it to come up as close to possible to 134.50 area. Come up as close as possible. Please come up as high as you can and I'm going to wait. I'm not going to jump in short here. I'm going to wait. I'm going to see what the market is doing. I'm going to look at market internals. We don't just blindly shoot at 930 Eastern. We're going to wait. Okay, what are you doing? Okay, you're going to come up. Yay. All right. Now I'm going to watch for two minute higher low, higher high, and then boom, our target is in range and we shoot. So that is the most important thing that you can do is make the trade come to you. Uh, I've heard uh, there's a Fibonacci lady online and she talks about no trigger, no trade. We have to wait for the trigger. If I am looking at Nike long today, which it is absolutely beautiful, I'm not just going to at open buy calls. Now, if I see a surge in volume, then absolutely I may buy calls 30 seconds into open. So it depends on the setup and what I'm hunting. So determine what you're hunting and what is the best approach. And don't apply the same approach to every single name that you approach. Okay. Let's look at Apple. I'm on it. Okay. Sorry. I, when I stop and read the chat room, I when y'all hear me lose my focus, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm, I try to pay attention to what y'all are telling me, but it's hard. Okay. So Apple short. Y'all kind of know the plan there. I would love to look for an apple short. When we look at this daily, we are extended. This is a beautiful chart. A touch back to the 8 EMA around 131.95 would actually be very healthy and it would probably most likely be a bull flag. So I am not looking to short apple until kingdom come. I am looking to short apple into a potential daily bull flag because this chart is still a gorgeous formation and i'm also not going to get ran over by it either if it doesn't work it doesn't work so apple get up into that 133.76 that'd be the first opportunity and then i'd still wait for that two minute trend change to get in short and then stay in short until the trend changes back Neo, during the live show yesterday in TCG, I talked about this head and shoulders and you can see it all the way up to the 12 hour. It's just an ideal. Ideal meaning here's the left shoulder, here's the head, here's the right shoulder, neckline at 4340. So we want that right side to just be a little bit higher. And then the bulls push it up and use their last bit of energy and then boom, pull it over. 4725 is that left side symmetry. So we'd be looking, if it would get all the way up to that area, it would still be a decent short. I think Dan the man is looking to short 46.59 and he entered a short this morning. If you're part of the community, you see that and it's pretty awesome to be able to see what type of, I can't do my alphabet, Netflix goes above Neo. Netflix, amazing move this morning and it's a it's really extended great move like apple it has a squeeze and what makes this chart a different than apple where i'm not looking to go short is this gap fill up at 546.30 and this squeeze we need two of these histogram bars to fire over the zero line to fire bull we have fired bull typically once you fire bull you get six, seven to eight bars of follow through so when we look at this follow through that would mean we could possibly make it up to the 546.30. Are we going to make it up there on one shot? Nope. Hardly zero, 10% um, chance that would happen. And we're constantly navigating probabilities. I honestly have no idea what's going to happen on the right side of the chart. And that's my job is to figure out how the probabilities line up and get myself positioned for the highest probability scenario. So this may come up and come back down. It's going to go up the path of least resistance. So Netflix, if the market's bullish, I like Netflix to the long side. This is a huge gap up. Nike. 
Nike, they had an amazing beat. Let me see, it was on the weekly, yeah. This chart, so if you're not a Swing Report member, I'm gonna give you a little um, preview into this weekend's potential Swing Report name. Nike is one of my number one contenders for the Swing Report name this weekend, so I'm gonna give it to you for free. If you're a Swing Report member, you're gonna get other names they don't have. But this chart is beautiful. This is what we wanna see. The problem is, is how far we are gapping up. So on the swing report, it may not make it into this weekend's report because it will be extended. But on any pullback, this name is beautiful. On top of the earnings beat, it got, so we have three things working for us. Let me spell that out. Three things working for us, earnings beat like mega upgrades, it's like 10 or something. And the technical setup was bullish. So I'm going to be watching volume and then let me also show you. Oh, I didn't put the link in there. Thank you, Tom, Tom I appreciate that. Sorry, I'm seeing something I missed. So if Nike is, this is volume share. So here we go, Torch. Torch had 2.1 million volume uh an hour was this an hour ago yes an hour ago it had 2.1 pre-market volume so to get dollar volume 2.1 million times 4.75 so that is the overall dollar volume so when you see nike up here with 484,000 pre-market volume and it's a 133 dollar issue name that is huge dollar volume. So that really stands out. We don't see these big names up in the pre-market high volume. Look at Tesla. Tesla's $679, almost 200,000. And this was over an hour ago. So that's why Nike is on my list today because this volume is very notable. So how will I play it? I would love a pullback to 148.07. That would be my dream scenario. And if the volume comes out the gate huge, and how do I know if it's huge? I zoom out and I'm gonna look at this volume over here. So I can even put up a line right here and say, okay. Actually, I would do that a little bit more uh, scientifically, but try to figure out what the average volume is. And if we have some screaming volume come in and as soon as it dips, which it likes to do, soon as it dips, then buy that dip. That's what I'd love to do. Below 148.07, I'd probably give it about 25 cents below that. But Nike on a pullback, let's, now I'm talking larger time frame. on a four hour or daily pullback will be a great buy. If the market continues to go up, they really prove their self with uh, guidance or earnings per share and this technical setup is just a beaut. R Roku, so Roku, Roku, Roku had this tightening range yesterday, and look at this run up. Beautiful run up. Isn't that gorgeous? They, the bulls will need a break. We are not in all-time high territory. All-time high is 486.72. So this could be a top fish around 431.58. And I'd give it about 20 cents over that, so 431.78. And I adjust my uh, wiggle room depending on what size the underlying is. So if it's a $2 name, I'm gonna give it about a penny wiggle room. If it's Amazon, I may give it $3 wiggle room. So you'll notice I vary depending on what the name is. Okay, so 431.58, then all the way up to 431.78. I like Roku for a top fish, especially if the market spikes and then pulls back, perfect scenario. And then another tip is stay in your trade as long as price is closing below the AEMA on the five minute. So let's say you entered a short here looking for the Roku five minute lower high. And then as soon as it lost the higher low, you enter short here. Stay in it as long as you get candle closes below the AEMA. Do you remember the trap keeper when we were younger? Uh, well, maybe not most of y'all, but there was a trap keeper. Well, I, I, we need a trade keeper. We need something to keep us in successful winning profitable trades and i call the ema the eight ema and if you use the 12 the 12 is fine that's your trade keeper stay in that trade as long as it's working as long as you get candle closes above the five minute don't get shaken out by one candle all right space space they had ff faa approval on their spaceships and 
people and all kinds of great news. So we're over that key resistance of 47.20. Your next resistance is 53.25. Why is space on the list? Because it's it ran up hard already. Why? Shorts. So it has a high number of shorts. So not only do we have news, the technical setup is not what I would normally like. I do like that it went sideways here. Optimum would have been for it to stay sideways into the news. And then you, you catch the shorts unaware on top of that. That would have been beautiful. However, I did grab something, a piece at 44.50 this morning or something like that. Uh, this is an amazing setup. Any pullback, the bulls should be hungry. The bears love to hate this name, so be careful. 43.95 is our key pre-market support. This is a lot of volume. And Jason or Lamont, I don't know which one will be going live this morning uh, in seven minutes, UTCG or so. If I lose track of time, don't forget that. All right, now this is a high risk short because it is a swaggy stocks, top stock is Tesla bullish, the sentiment. So Wall Street bets, they are all talking about Tesla bullish. It was their number one name yesterday. So it's high risk, 692, then 697, 62. Very high risk. However, if it works, you got a lot of meat on the bone because this sucker ran hard. So I like Tesla to the short side today. If you get in a put, say in your head, trade keeper, trade keeper, trade keeper. What am I going to do to stay in this tr trade is if the five minute EMA, excuse me, yes, the five minute eight EMA stays overhead, what candle closes below, I stay in this trade. If we get a green trade and we test it, I'm staying in it as long as we get candle closes below. Wish, we talked about this cup and handle yesterday, potential, it's a high high volume pre-market name. We talked about this. It's beautiful. It's got to get over $15. Got a lot of lines on this chart. So I'm going to actually shrink it a little bit so you can take a picture and look at the supports at 1413. Looks like we got it. Just got another one at 1410. So 1410, 1413. We've got a squeeze on this. This thing could be explosive today to the upside or downside. Don't predict. We are not in the business of predicting. We like to get the probabilities in our, on our side, position ourselves, and then the market's going to do what it's going to do, and we react accordingly. QQQ. Okay, we've got a little spike up here. 350 40 was the number I was watching and we just barreled right over it and then the infrastructure news came out and everyone said we don't want technology anymore but this could just be simply technology consolidating in a healthy way as long as we go sideways or slightly down it is still the bulls in control of QQQ your key resistances are let me start over we just got a spike here 350 84 so those are all your levels for QQQ. I'll pause for a second for you to take a screenshot. Again, you can rewind if needed. All right, and SPY. So we are hitting, let's see, 42599. That is our double top. 4259 is an after hours level from over here. 42599. All right, so those are your levels for SPY. Be careful, watch market internals. Sit in your tree stand and wait. Wait for the animal you're hunting, the direction that you're hunting it. Are you hunting it with a rifle or a bow, i.e. options or stocks? Sit in that tree stand and you wait for your animal to get as close as possibly can to increase your chances of a great kill. So now all you hunters, y'all go out there, you do what you know to do and don't start trying to kill everything. Take some profit on space at 50 bucks. Okay, I will. Uh, $2,000. Okay, Amazon for Tammy. I'm not playing preferential treatment to Tammy, but she always knows how to sneak it in there at the end. So uh, we had that double top in the 3524 area and the bears are having their way with it right now. And yesterday uh, I talked about in the uh, midday show 
We held the support yesterday. We broke it, the support by $3.15. That's not a bear break to me, but we talked about that price could come all the way back to the daily 21 EMA mean reversion and still be healthy. Of course, it would lose the daily higher, high, higher, low, but 21 EMA mean reversion is healthy on the weekly chart. And it could come down to three, three, four, five and still be healthy. So what I would love to see on a weekly is a little bull flag here. I'm not, Amazon is not bearish to me in any way, shape or form on larger time frames. To me, this gives me an opportunity to position myself for, myself for a run into earnings. Okay, Jason's going live in three minutes. That's it for me. Time to hunt, that's right. <laughs> we probably do have PETA. I don't hunt anymore, I think it's awful. But I did it growing up and my dad did it to feed his family of six and I appreciated it. All right, y'all have a great day. You stop losses. Oh, I forgot Bitcoin. Okay, I'm still going. Let me go to Bitcoin. Sorry. Bitcoin resistance, 35,500 support, 32,300. I don't like these type of head and shoulders formation. We get a lower high. We get this little bounce, a higher high, and they may have used up all their buying power. Ethereum looks weaker though. You see how it's not holding that line? Let me flip back and forth. Bitcoin is holding that and Ethereum is not. So Ethereum is definitely weaker. Your next support on Ethereum is 1823.97. For those of you who stayed on, uh, resistance 1880, 1947, support 1840 on Ethereum. That doesn't look good. Bitcoin, 15 minute oversold, 30 minute approaching oversold. So I like Bitcoin better. We've got a little lower wick of bulls buying the dip here. I like this one for an oversold bounce and we may have just gotten a vol climax, but let's wait for the two minute to change the trend, okay? We need that higher low, and then put your stop below that higher low. Whew, that was close. All right, that's it for me.